My name is Lou Gagliano, Strategic Advisor to SeaTac. When I get asked what one thing makes a difference to affecting positive healthcare change, I consistently answer leadership. The two individuals with us today are beacon examples of that in Arizona. I am here with Sandy Severson, Senior Vice President of Care Improvement, Arizona Hospital and Healthcare Association, and Tony Fonzi, who said I can call him Tony, Chief Innovation Officer of Health Current. I like your titles, and I like your titles because it provides a connection between innovation and care improvement. I know you believe this is both possible, and so does CTAC. Our project in Arizona, the Arizona Coalition to Transform Serious Illness Care, has been funded by a grant from the David and Laurel Lovell Foundation of Arizona. We thank that foundation for their belief they have placed in CTAC, Arizona Hospital and Healthcare Association, the Arizona End of Life Care Partnership of Tucson, who have worked to define care changes, some of which you will hear about today. Thank you, Lou. The Arizona Hospital and Healthcare Association formed the Arizona Coalition, Coalition because we saw a huge need that wasn't being addressed. While many organizations were working within their own organizations to improve um, care for the seriously ill, each organization was only making incremental progress, not transformational. We quickly realized that education and outreach and palliative care services for a small uh, uh, volume of patients wasn't enough, that we really needed to change our models of care and our processes to improve care for the seriously ill. In mid-2019, um, the Hospital Association partnered with CTAC, Discern Health, and the End of Life Care Partnership to develop this statewide coalition and to use data to drive our improvement along with evidence-based practice with our goal of transforming care for the seriously ill. Over 40 individuals actually came to the table and were very committed to this work uh, to develop these new models, uh, to research the best practices and then to implement them across the state. Our goal is really uh, to provide care to the most vulnerable people in the state. These best practice models are, are to focus on the seriously ill, the patient, the family unit, regardless of ethnicity, language, and geography. Tony, please describe for us the health current organization, its importance to improving healthcare within the state for everybody and including those with serious illness and also provide some comments on your work on the Health Information Exchange Registry. Thank you. Arizona legislature, many years ago actually, enabled the state to create its own health information exchange. And a health information exchange is, you could think of it as a parking lot for your composite set of health data. It's not just your data from your primary care doctor, but it's your data from your hospital visit or your post-acute hospital stay. Um, so what we do is we create a longitudinal record. We have over 700 participating organizations that includes health systems, health plans, primary care, FQHCs, post-acutes, you name it. If any of you today went to the emergency department or were admitted into the hospital, within minutes, the HIE would know that. And as your data is accumulating from your stay, you get a diagnosis, you have medications, you have lab values, you have radiology reports. All of that information also flows to the HIE and helps us build that knowledge of you. I wanna just make two points and then we're gonna move on to Sandy's next question. Number one, meaningful numbers drive, help drive change. Data can is a very critical, important feature of how we are able to map the kinds of changes that we believe are important. The second thing, and you mentioned longitudinal. Uh, we, CTAC, has long believed that the patients we serve are on a journey, and we must, we must be impactful on that journey and bring care 
throughout that journey process and be responsive to the kind of services that patients need. Given our work today and the voices of 40 plus impactful and busy people on our steering committee, what do you believe our focus and direction has, is and how is it emerging? The CTAC Act Index showed us that Arizona does not perform well with the composite of community measures compared to other states and that uh, people in Arizona are spending more time in the ICU the last six months of life. Our steering committee felt strongly that our focus sh should really uh, look at which community services uh, should we implement or scale to help people with serious illness manage health conditions and increase the number of days at home. We believe that by developing a network and integrated patient support system that people can stay in their homes. What we've heard over and over again is they don't want to be in the hospital that last few months, six months of their life. They really want to be at home and that's our goal is to support that. Tony, outline to your accomplishments to date the work that we've done and how we've gone about this, we've really kind of modeled after a lot of work that Sandy and others of you have done. We created a work group that brought together many players in this field. And just to you know, name a few, but we have ASHA, the End of Life Care Partnership, AARP, the Secretary of State's Office, um, multiple fire departments who are among our most vocal uh, participants, as Sandy would attest to, I think. We have health plans, attorneys, the attorney general's office. So we put that group together and we sat down together and we worked on building the requirements for the system. You mentioned the Level Foundation. The Level Foundation has asked us, would we please do a pilot in Southeastern Arizona? We have Tucson Medical Center, El Rio Health, Dependable Health, uh, a large home health agency, Benson Hospital, SIGO Area Agency on Aging, Step Up to Justice, a lot of the names and people that you know and work with. If I'm a primary care provider and I want to give my patient, help my patients develop end of life documents, then I come up with a plan to do it. But unless I get to solve the other end of the plan, which is when a patient shows up and needs to use those documents, that the doctors will actually honor them and see them I'm not accomplishing my overall goal. So getting all these people in the same room at the same time and all taking responsibility, not just for our own little vertical part, but for the entire end-to-end -end spectrum. All members of the healthcare system, whether at the federal or state level, have been affected by COVID. What have we learned from how systems, whether they're in Arizona or in other places, have responded, including the issue of care access for members of our population who are not well served. I think throughout the COVID pandemic and, and a little bit still, uh, because we're always waiting for that second wave to come, um, we were experiencing an increase in ICU usage. Of course, ED and ICU, um, those most affected, of course, were the elderly, the frail, those with chronic medical conditions, and unfortunately, the most underserved populations, the rural, the people that live in, in the rural areas or the extreme, extremely poor disadvantaged. Um, we realized as the rest of the nation did that there are stark disparities in services, um, such as uh, race, the ethnicity, the income, the immigration status and geographical region. And we definitely saw this in, in Arizona. Um, we saw that the native indigenous populations were the hardest hit with COVID and they had the least amount of resources available. Uh, the rural areas um, were not prepared for the volume of patients. Um, our steering committee, um, the, the participating organizations, as Tony has alluded to, they lean in. Uh, in a time of crisis or a time of high pressure, they're all in. This was not work we were planning for the future. This is something that we had to 
sit at the table and actually plan and implement something now. Uh, they felt, felt this tremendous sense of urgency in addressing the inequities of care for these vulnerable populations. Tani, tell us how effectively we how effective we can be to work together and, and what both our important missions are for this state. Well, you mentioned one of these things uh, a few minutes ago, Lou, and that is data analytics. It it does take data to make change and to make things happen. Um, we happen to have a, a deep expertise in data collection and data analytics. So not only can we see if somebody had an advanced directive in this case, um, whether it was honored, but we can pull stats on those and we can compare them against the clinical stats on those same people in the population. So I think ultimately that data value will be invaluable. If you go to the trouble of creating one of these documents and you expect that when it's needed, it's going to be honored. That also means it has to be visible to somebody. Well, with the imputed knowledge concept, if it's visible, if it's visible to anybody in the healthcare community, it should be visible to everybody in the healthcare community. And that kind of leverage, that kind of visibility is what it's going to take to make make this whole thing ultimately work the way we all want it to. This kind of change takes time. Um, we just need to stay our course. Uh, we've completed phase one of a multi-year program um, in identifying where our focus will be. We believe that uh, you know, through staying our course, through the design and implementation of our interventions, we will positively impact the seriously ill in Arizona by providing more home and community-based palliative care services. Um, the data will demonstrate, as, as Tony talked about, but also the data with the ACT index and the data we have internal within the state, our Medicare, our Medicaid data, our payer claims, that we should see decreased ICU utilization the last six months of life and more days at home, resulting in a higher incidence of that gold concordant care, people getting the care that they want where they want. Our goal is for Arizonans uh, to live as well as possible, as long as possible. You know, I'm embarrassed to say that a year ago, I didn't know there was a CTAC, and I didn't know there was an end of life care partnership. And I really didn't know about all of you and all of the people who are committed in doing this work. And it really has changed my life to, to get to know you and to get to understand this problem and have a small role in attempting to work beside you to, to improve it and solve it ultimately. But it, it's, it's been life-changing. I want to thank uh, CTAC and all of the partners around the table, Tony and, and Health Current, for leaning in, um, we need change desperately. We need to reduce suffering and uh, what great partners we have across the state and the nation uh, to, to, to make this change happen.